Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome to the ninth video in the Circular Motion series for Level 3 Physics, where we're going to look some more details around satellites, uh, specifically weightlessness and geostationary satellites. So weightlessness is um, something you might have seen if you've seen some YouTube videos of astronauts in the International Space Station. Um, it appears that they're, they're floating around, and they looks like they don't have gravity acting on them at all. However, we know from the previous videos that for a satellite to stay in orbit, the force of gravity still acts on it. Okay, The Earth's gravity still um, acts on the satellite, even though it's in space. A lot of people think that gravity stops once space starts. Not the case. So they're not really weightless, because the force of gravity is acting on, this, on the um, space station they're in, the force of gravity is still acting on them. Even though we see them floating around. So... We call this, to keep it separate from the idea of actually being truly weightless, which would be out in deep space, away from any other large um, body like a star or a planet, this apparent weightlessness, the fact that they're floating around but still have gravity on them, is called that, apparent weightlessness, or microgravity is the other name um, that's given to it. So there's two explanations to help uh, understand this, and if you ever asked about this, you could use any of these explanations. So the first is um, the diagram on the right. Remember, this is Newton's idea of, um, of a satellite, and he showed that the way it works is that um, if you fire something around the Earth, it falls back towards the Earth. If you get the velocity high enough, it just keeps falling around the Earth um, in a complete orbit. And the space station itself is falling around the Earth in a complete orbit. The people inside are also free-falling around the Earth. So the whole time, they're just literally falling and the spaceship's falling with them so they don't notice it, um, and they're constantly doing that. So that's one explanation why they look like they're floating. The second is that there's no normal force up there, um, and the feeling of weight is actually created by the normal force, not by the force of gravity on you. You actually feel the normal force, not, not gravity itself. So the example of that, I just want to go back to this idea of vertical circles. These are the diagrams of the bucket being spun around over a head. And you can see there's uh, the red bucket, there's the, um, gravity downwards, and when the bucket's at the bottom, tension goes up, and when the bucket's at the top, tension goes down. But I want you to imagine this same diagram. Instead of a bucket, I want you to imagine a, um, a circus ride, a vertical um, circular motion circus ride, where you're being spun around a vertical circle. So you're sitting in a seat and being spun around this thing. So instead of a tension force, you can have a normal force on you, because you're sitting on a seat and that... Um, um, seat is, is providing a normal force and it will look exactly the same I've just replaced tension with normal at the bottom of the vertical circle as you're being spun around you feel really heavy you feel really squashed into the seat now gravity hasn't changed so why do you feel heavy it's because you have a large normal force when you get to the top you feel a bit much lighter again gravity has not changed but the normal force is smaller so it's the normal force on you a big normal force makes you feel heavy a small normal force makes you feel um, light and no normal force, which is what happens when you're orbiting the planet, makes you feel weightless. So you could use any of those two explanations if you're ever asked about this. The next um, point that I want to talk about was geostationary satellites. So we have Kepler's law that we derived um, in the last video, and the, the sort of um, way it's written often is the t squared on one side and r cubed on the other side. We could square root that if we wanted to. Now, satellites orbit in a time period T, and that's dictated by the radius they're at. The Earth also spins. We know it spins on its axis once every 24 hours, and we can work out what that is in seconds, just by going 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours. That's how many seconds it is. If we put that many seconds into the equation at the top there, and rearrange to work out what the radius of the orbit is, um, we'll get a value, and that value is called the ge uh, geostationary orbit. It's the value in which the satellites are going around the Earth at exactly the same time that the Earth is spinning. If you get a satellite and you get this um, at doing it over the equator, what that looks like is it looks like the satellite's above the same place on Earth the whole time. Because as it's spinning around the Earth, the Earth itself is spinning to match it. Uh, and these satellites have uh, a lot of use in communication. It's very useful to have a, a satellite in the same place in the sky all the time. Um, and a bunch of other uses as well.
So that's geostationary satellites.